All right, good morning. Thank you for coming and spending the day together with students. It's a, a great honor and a privilege for me to be here with you. So, I remember maybe 30, 40 years ago as a, as a, as a young boy, you know, um, oil was king. I remember if you really wanted to make money, it was you were either in the business of mining oil or you were selling products which really consumed uh, oil. Um, all the top companies in the world were in this, in this space. But then I think, you know, for many of us, the, the PC came on the scene. It was a big change for me. It really set the course of my life. It inspired me and took me on the direction that I'm in today. And it kind of, it happened so quickly, this computing revolution, right? Then there was the internet. And then somehow it's almost like we just, we just blink and everything is connected. We have the cloud. We have now network computing and all the devices, phones, tablets, laptops, smart homes, smart car. You know, it's just an amazing change. And I think now more recently even we are talking about computing at the edge. So this, this computing revolution, uh, so quick, and I think it's changed now that oil is not the currency of the world. In a way, it's data. This is what is binding everything together. And I think we're really feeling this at, at Cadence, especially for me in the last few years. You know, we are calling it a data-driven economy. We took this phrase from Credit Suisse. And you can look now, if you, if you took at the end of last year, the top companies in the world by market cap, right? It's a complete change from 40, 50 years ago. These companies did not exist. And I feel for us, all of us here today, this is, it's a very, very exciting time for our industry. And I think now is an inflection point. It's a change, right? Last year, we had 20% growth in the semiconductor industry. So we crossed $400 billion as a community together. That's amazing. And the trend is set to continue. The, you know, the analysis that we have, it's been slow and steady, you know, just a few percent a year the last five plus years. But looking forwards, almost 3x the growth rate. So this is all combined together. And I think that's really empowered by this fact that data is the new currency of the world. Just looking at some things here, you know, in terms of connected devices, for example, IoT, 13% per year growth rate. And then for the big hyperscale, the cloud providers with the big data centers, you know, the top five companies there, they are spending more than $60 billion a year on servers and compute. That's just an amazing amount of money. And it's growing fast, 20 to 30% per year is what they are spending on this infrastructure. And then, of course, automotive. We are here in Germany in the, in the heart of automotive. I mean, this, for me, it's so wonderful. Uh, we are so committed to it at, at Cadence. Um, you know, my understanding, I'm, you know, I'm not an expert on the details, but something like 100 plus chips on a premium automobile today. But a trend, I mean, we could see easily over 1,000 chips on the cars of the futures. They are like a whole computing ecosystem with connected devices, with network, with almost server level compute power in a car of the future. And this is uh, you know, just exploding in front of us. I think it's one of the biggest opportunities in a data-driven economy. Some of the most data consumption, data analytics will happen around the automotive industry. So that's a huge responsibility, I think, as well, for Cadence as one of your partners. You know, we are, we are not done yet. There is so much to do to really make sure we can enable you to build systems that are safe, systems that are reliable. Um, but it's coming together for us now. You know, if we look across our portfolio, so on the design IP side, we have this amazing configurable processor architecture, Tensilica. So we have customized solutions now for vision and AI, also for radar and LIDAR. In terms of other design IP that we feel is in the car of the future, uh, controllers, FI, DDR, you know, making sure under ISO 26262 that they are ASIL ready. Um, on the verification side, you know, safety is really driving some big fundamental changes we need to make to these tools. We need to embrace the idea of fault modeling, of fault simulation, fault injection. How do we do fault management and fault tracking? 
We are even adding you know, a special formal app for safety to our Jasper solution. On the implementation side, you know, safety drives different design techniques, for example, safety islands. How do we enable our place and route solution to be safety aware? In-field logic best, having seamless integration with our implementation flow. And then for our amazing analog and custom platform Virtuoso, you know, deep collaborations and integrations to support MEMS and Photonics. So a lot of things coming together for us. Uh, also under ISO 26262, how to have the tool qualification levels to certify TCL1, not just for the tools, but also our automotive flows. So a lot for us to do, a lot that we are doing, you know, we are increasing our investment every year in automotive. My own group in the verification division, I already doubled the funding uh, since I took over the group. Uh, I think this is really, really critical uh, and a great opportunity for, for both of us. A couple of things that I'm very pleased to be able to share with you today, uh, you know, building out on this uh, automotive a portfolio. So we actually are announcing here three major new verification IPs for protocols that we think are critical in the automotive space. Um, next generation flash storage, UFS3, uh, Hyper RAM for low power DRAM, and of course Coax Express for high speed serial communication over coaxial. One more thing. Now I'm not the best person to share this uh, with you. This is in our custom and analog solution, but it's something that I think is really amazing. And actually we're very lucky. I have my friend, the R&D leader and brainchild, Vinod here. So I'll hand over to Vinod and he can tell you about this. Thank you, Paul. So I'm really happy to be here um, in the heartland of uh, European automotive design to talk about this exciting new product announcement we have in this area, um, which has something to do with reliability. So um, when I was a little kid, you know, the electronics in my life was really something like this, a old tube radio, um, and it wasn't really mission critical. Um, the mission critical things like this um, ambassador car, if you've ever been to India, this used to be very popular. Um, the mission critical elements in there were not electronic. Um, it was something like, you know, you, your radiator blew up and you had to find a well and you have to fill it with water. But today, it's a little different for me. Um, I picked this car up about a year ago. This is me in Fremont. Sorry, this is not uh, German. My previous car was made in Bavaria. Uh, but now, mission critical means something very different to me. There's a lot of electronics in there, and those need to be reliable. Of course, that's not only in uh, automotive. Uh, it's also in industrial IoT. It's in many other devices in mission critical applications. So electronics in mission critical applications need to be really reliable. And it's very important for the analog and mixed signal components there to have high reliability because they're usually the ones at the edges dealing with the real world. They interface with reality, with the, you know, before things get digitized, you have sensors, you have some processing, some DSP, some edge processing, and then maybe they all get digital. And that's usually the harshest environment, you know, whether it's an industrial IoT or in a car, these things are exposed and have to be very reliable. Right? So it's very important to have high reliability in analog devices and mixed signal devices. Now, you know, at Cadence, uh, we have been, uh, uh, we have been uh, fortunate that our platforms, our Virtuoso ADE platform and our Spectra Simulation platform have been used by analog designers for a long time to make sure that their circuits have the right functionality. But today, we are very pleased to introduce the Legato Reliability Solution, which extends this to reliability so that as a designer, you can design in reliability and manage reliability throughout the life cycle of the product. So we have three aspects in this product. The first one is um, analog uh, fault modeling. This enables you to look at 
test and make sure that as the parts come off the uh, plant, off the fab, and go into a mission critical application, you get functional parts, that you have very good test coverage and the parts are actually functional. Then we have uh, electrothermal simulation, and, um, and then we have uh, advanced aging analysis. So the electrothermal simulation lets you look at the interaction between thermal and electrical effects, uh, especially when you have components operating in very high temperatures, for example, in automotive applications. could be in other applications. Um, you need to be able to uh, put a thermal sensor in the right place, or you need to be able to put matching devices on isotherms. These are the kind of problems that you can analyze with that uh, solution. And finally, you need to know the age of your, um, how the behavior of your circuit as it ages, and we have aging simulation for that. We've always had aging simulation, but we made a lot of improvements to our aging simulation. Uh, one of the big improvements is uh, to look at the effect of process variation and aging together so that you can see the distribution of age parts, and that lets you have much better control over uh, what to expect as the product ages in the field. Okay? Um, so um, we have been uh, working with this uh, solution with a few early customers. Here you can see one of our partners. We are very fortunate that they've already found it very interesting. And uh, if you want more information, uh, you should go to our website, cadence.com, and you'll see a lot of information there. And we'll have videos and white papers and things like that. So with that, I hope you find this product of interest and uh, exciting. And uh, we are looking forward to it being of use to our um, customers and uh, help them design more reliable electronics for those mission-critical applications. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Thanks for noting. Awesome. Yeah, very excited about regard to liability. So switching topics a little bit, actually, to my, to my day job, so our digital verification solution. Um, I see another huge responsibility for us here. As I go around, as I talk to you and to our customers and our partners, you know, verification is kind of an impossible task, right? Uh, if you think of a, a design, you know, with n components, you've got of the order of two to the n possible states. And in fact, actually, if we think in terms of transitions, so the number of behaviors, it's two to the n squared. You know, you can never be done with verification. There is always the chance that you did not cover or test something. Um, and so this is, and we can see, this is just driving a, like, almost like an exponential. It's like a virus. You know, every year you need more people. Every year you need more compute power to try to go after this impossible space. So there's a real need uh, and a responsibility, I feel, for, for my team in Cadence. What can we do to deliver solutions that dramatically improve your verification productivity? How can you cover more with less resource? So how are we thinking about doing this? Um, in the end, the way I look at this for my team, the strategy that I'm driving, is that we have different engine, we have different methods to go after this two to the end space. We can attack with formal. We can attack with simulation. We can accelerate with emulation or prototyping. First, all these engines have to have the quality, right? You have to trust your verification tool. If your verification tool has a bug, then you cannot catch bugs in your own design. And then after the quality is just that performance. What can we do in every way to drive the engines to cover more with less resource? So this is a mindset, the best quality, the best performance for our core engines. Then with this foundation, to bind it together with the methodologies. How do you use the right engine for the right task in the right way? So how do you get the best solution for functional safety, the best solution for low power or mixed signal? And if you look at our products today, so they align very well with this core strategy. So we have Jasper Gold, our leading solution for formal and static. We have Excelium for the logic simulation, Palladium for emulation, and Proteum for prototyping. And then the methodologies bind together with our verification IP, our Indago debugger, our vManager coverage tool, and Perspec for SOC test generation. So let me talk just a little bit about 
some of these core engines for you now. So I'll begin actually with our, with our hardware acceleration, our Palladium and Proteum solutions. So the, the key thing here that I found, it, we see really two quite distinct needs from our customers and partners. So one is to accelerate the debug of your design. The second is, as the design is maturing and stabilizing, to accelerate the debug and bring up of your software around the chip. And the feeling that we have at Cadence is that to give you the best productivity, the best performance for these two cases cannot be met with one system. We cannot give you one hardware tool that gives you the best results for both. So we are offering you two. So on the Palladium side, this is what we call emulation, the debug of your design. We use our own custom processor. We actually make our own chip. It's a special dedicated solution for rapid design debug. Actually, if I kind of draw a, uh, maybe copy a little bit from our, our friends at BMW, I would say Palladium is the ultimate debug machine. It has amazing capacity. It can go from just small 4 million gate designs to almost 5 billion gate designs. And the compile time is just lightning fast, you know, up to 140 million gates an hour. So it's very, very fast to compile. And any run you do, any simulation, you always have full trace available. You can debug the value of any signal at any time in the simulation without any overhead. So it really is an amazing solution for rapid design debug. As your design stabilizes, as you move more to the software bring up, then we offer a very smooth transition actually to a different system that we feel is much better for this space. So it offers much, much faster simulation performance, but not necessarily so strong on the build time or the debug. Um, but by unifying the compiler, by having a common front end and by having automated partitioning, you can have very quick bring up. So you can move from the first system to the second system seamlessly. And we think this gives you the best overall productivity per our vision. So you buy the right mix of capacity between Palladium and Proteum based on the needs for your application. And this has been working you know, really, really well for us. We had another record year last year. It's amazing for me, the success. More than 50 new logos for Palladium Z1, 20 logos for Proteum S1. Um, so we see this space growing very, very fast. And this kind of combination, this tag team between the two systems is really enable us to give you the best performance for each use case. On the simulation side, again, performance, performance, performance. So we actually think three things, right? The compile time, the throughput, and the latency. So for build, our focus is how to leverage multi-CPU. We have invested heavily in a very clever technology to partition the design. We can cut the design up and compile it concurrently across multiple CPU. We can also use that same technology to give you a very high performance incremental build. So when you're running the design every day, you have new design changes checked in every day. Not the whole design will change each time. So only maybe a little bit has changed. So we should only build just the part that has changed. So this is working very well for us. And we're committed to this technology in all flows, so with low power, with mixed signal, and so on. On the simulation performance, again, two kind of sides. So for your IP level regressions, you, know, you already have tens of thousands of randomized tests with UVM. So there is already extreme parallelization at the block level just by the nature of your test regressions. So here, this is where we still feel a commitment to single core simulation. How much performance can we get with just one CPU? And we have made major upgrades already in the last few years, up to 2x improvement in performance. And my feeling there is still more to come. Over the next 18 to 24 months, I think we can deliver you another 2x again in single core performance with Excelium. Now, for some of the tests, the really long running bottleneck tests, your critical IPs, some of your SOC level tests that are high activity, here when they just run long, 10, 20, 30 hours, Again, we can leverage parallelism. We can actually parallelize the runtime of the simulation. And we made a very exciting acquisition of a company in Israel, RocketTick, that have a very unique technology to partition a design in runtime. Uh, so this is now integrated with our Excelium solution. And this can give you, you know, 5x, 10x in certain cases for those bottleneck tests. So kind of a combination of all three is how we feel that we can give you the best performance productivity with logic simulation. 
Example here, just recently from CDN Live in Israel, wanted to share is where we've seen, you know, you can get 3x and then up to 30x by leveraging this parallel and incremental build in terms of your daily verification throughput. So very, very exciting and very successful for us. On to formal. So actually, 20 or so years ago, my, my, my PhD was in formal verification. And, and back then, it was kind of an academic thing, right? You could do stuff, small circuits, but nobody thought it would be a mainstream part of commercial chip design. Now today, and I think in a huge part through this company, Jasper Design Automation, that we acquired, that has really happened. I have been so impressed with the Jasper team and the Jasper success. You know, 17 of the top 20 semiconductors are using Formal now as a mainstream technology across all of their SOC design. And we see that starting to move now beyond the top 20. So we increased the customer base for Jasper by almost 1.3x last year. Its market is really expanding very, very rapidly. Now, I'm not saying that Formal will replace simulation. For me, the right approach is a combination. You know, some of the two to the end, some of the verification task, you get the best use of your CPU resource with Formal. Some of your verification task, randomized simulation with UVM is the best way to go. So this idea, this what we call multi-engine coverage, multi-engine verification closure, I think this is the future. And that's where actually this technology V Manager is important. So if you have different engines to target your verification problem, formal, simulation, emulation, how do you bring it all together? So all these tools now, they write natively to an enterprise coverage database, a single unified functional coverage database. And this database, we then offer you very powerful interfaces for analytics and reporting. So you can program your own methods using an advanced Python interface. And we also offer web-based analytics and a desktop GUI client. Not only can you do the design, the line coverage in your design, but you can also enter your functional specification, your test plan, and do analytics around functional coverage. So this environment, this multi-engine closure and multi-engine uh, verification management, we think this is how we can help with that big two to the end challenge uh, for your future design methodologies. So last thing, uh, just switching actually to my, to my previous role a little, uh, I wanted to say a few words about our digital solution and mixed signal implementation solutions. So here we are having really some, some amazing success. Uh, if I look uh, at the last five years, you know, Cadence has pretty much rewritten its implementation flow front to back. New synthesis, new DFT, new place and route, new timing sign off, uh, new DRC checking. And these new technologies are very powerful. And I think this is why we have such amazing success now and momentum in, in the market. Two things just to call out. First, massively parallel. So every step in the flow, synthesis, place and route, sign off, every step can leverage multi-CPU and also multi-machine. So again, it will cut the design into pieces and it can actually run on different blades on your server farm as well as multi-core on a single um, blade. So the solution is the highest capacity of anything in the market. And I always say with a flow, you are only as good as the weakest link. If, you know, if there is one step in the flow that does not have capacity, then your whole chip has to be sized. You have to cut your blocks to handle that weakest link. So every step in the flow is so scalable and so parallel now, so we can drive much, much bigger blocks uh, than any other tool on the market. The other thing is the engine unification. So when you have a flow, you need things to be smooth. The way we do delay calculation in synthesis, place and route, sign off, you need to use the same engine. The way we do placement, the way we do global routing. So all of these engines are now unified full flow. So we have a very predictable, very high capacity solution. And I think these are kind of the two main reasons why we have such great success in digital these last few years. Now on to mixed signal, and I think here, especially in the automotive industry, what, what I've really seen is, is a big change from what I call traditional mixed signal design to advanced mixed signal design. So in traditional mixed signal, there are maybe only a few blocks on the chip. 
one or two analog, one or two digital. And there is always a very clear owner. Either the chip is owned by the analog team or the chip is owned by the digital team. I think in the future, and as we drive advanced mixed signal, we are seeing 10, sometimes hundreds of partitions. And we can have nested. You can have analog inside digital and then digital inside analog. There is no clear owner. So the whole floor planning, the whole closure at the top level, you cannot, have, you cannot say that one team is the most responsible. You have to work together. You have to collaborate. So in this environment, we feel that the only way to, to deliver an advanced mixed signal solution is with a common database. A simple netlist file format is not enough information to give you the productivity that you need. So we have this open access platform. It's extendable. It's programmable. Um, our leading virtuoso custom solution and our digital flow, Jenna, Synovus, Tempus, they all write and read natively from this database. So that enables us to deliver you some unique features. For example, concurrent floor planning. So the analog team, maybe you just say, hey, these pins need to go on the left side of the block and a minimum pitch. But leave some freedom for the digital team to pick the final location of those pins. So we can represent these pin constraints natively in the open access format. Also, we can extract different views. So even though you have many nested analog digital hierarchy, we can extract a full chip digital view to use for digital timing sign-off. Or we can extract all of the power domain crossings and the power supply connections. So we can look at all the mixed signal crossings from analog to digital, digital to analog, and we can statically check do you have level shifters where you need level shifters? Do you have isolation where you need isolation? These kinds of things could only previously be verified using simulation, using dynamic methods. And actually, this low power, mixed signal low power static, um, we've caught several real silicon bugs before tape out with it that were missed by dynamic simulation. So this common platform, common database, this is, I think, how we, how we are leading and how we are driving. And again, same as safety and reliability. Mixed signal is a priority for Cadence. We see the future of design more and more mixed signal. In the end, my, my feeling, every chip will be a mixed signal chip. So there is still a lot for us to do. I can give you more detailed talking sometime. There are lots of things that I think are not right here and need improving. But we have some great leadership, and we want to work with you to be the best here. So just to, to summarize, um, I think the future is really bright. It's an amazing time. I am so privileged to be a part of the semiconductor industry. Uh, this data-driven economy, this compute revolution with everything connected and data being the new currency, the future, it's an opportunity of us all to grow and to be successful. In the end, at Cadence, you know, we are a humble company. It, you know, we are here to partner with you. It is about your success. It is about working with our foundry partners, our channel partners. You know, we thrive together as a team. Thank you very much. <laughs>